Have you discovered SharePoint list column formatting, also known as JSON formatting? If you're new to this or you're trying to understand how to customize the look of a list or library in SharePoint, this video is for you. This is the first in a series of videos that's covering list column formatting and list view formatting and probably a few other things as well. It'll take a little CSS and HTML knowledge, so if you're comfortable with that, join me as we dive in to a simple example and show what's possible and build out something neat. So I've got a site here that represents just some demos that I'm doing, and on this uh, site I've got a projects list. So this will just be a sample projects list in this case. It's going to have you know basic information, the, the title of the project, the percentage uh, of progress that it's currently in, and the due date. Now, there's really nothing special about this right now. There's no formatting at all applied to this. So I'd like to put in a little bit of color, make some things stand out so I know if things are overdue, if they're complete, things like that. And this is without really configuring any new views to do any filtering based on, you know, completion or overdue or anything like that. That can always be done, of course. But in this case, I just want to do the column formatting to make this pop a little bit more. So we're gonna start with something easy first, the progress field. Right now it's just a number field. There's no zeros after the decimal, it's just a straight integer. And we're gonna turn this into a progress bar. We won't even need to use formulas with this. So to do this, we're going to click on the down arrow for the header, go down to column settings and format this column. And depending on the field type, you'll have different options here. For numbers, we've got data bars and conditional formatting. So conditional formatting will let you change the format of this field based on its own values, maybe the values of other fields. That's, that's certainly possible as well. But for this one, we want to use data bars. So it will give us a progress bar type of look to this. So we'll click on data bars and then I'm going to click on edit template. So we have two options here. We have minimum maximum value. We're going to change maximum value to 100 because this is a percentage. And we don't have to worry in this case about positive or negative values because everything's always going to be positive. From here, we're going to click save. We can go in and change the color of this. So if we wanted this more of a dark blue, we can just change that of the positive value field. We'll click save and then close. So now we've got a nice progress bar. Uh, you could see that it, it will eventually fill up the entire bar once something goes to 100%. And we even see the bar in the details view, which is kind of nice. So the progress bar is done, but let me show you one other way you could get to that same thing. This is the older way that we used to have to apply JSON formatting before it was introduced on that modern view. So before we had to go to the field and we had to scroll down and this is what we had to type in. Well, it, it is, isn't quite this messy, but this is how we would have to apply that before. And generally what it really meant was we are gonna find an example on the internet, copy and paste it in here and then tweak it because no one wants to write this stuff from scratch. So the other field is due date. I don't think I really want to do anything with this field. What I really would like is a better status indicator that would show if a project is in progress, completed, maybe if it's overdue. Uh, we could do that based on a combination of looking at the progress field and the due date field. So right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a text field. I could do a choice, but honestly, all I really want to do is have some place so that the formatting can control the text inside that cell as well as the colors, the, the style that's applied there. So I'm gonna create a text field. I'll call this status. It'll be a single line of text. And then I'm just gonna click save. So now the status field is in here. There's no values on here and that's fine. We're not actually even going to store a value for this column. All we're gonna do is use this to apply custom column formatting. So we're gonna hit the down arrow and go to column settings and format this column. So we've got two things we really need to do. First, we need to, oh, and in case you didn't know, you can resize this to whatever width you would like so that you can make sure you see what it is that you're modifying. 
So as we are updating this, we're going to see real time results right over here. So the first thing we really need to do is apply some colors to this, depending on the value of our progress bar and the value of the due date. So for that, we're going to go to conditional formatting. So we have three rules we really need to watch for. One is if the progress is under 100% and it's not past the due date. The other is if the progress is under 100% and it is past the due date. And the third is going to be if the progress is 100%. So first we're going to apply our in progress status color. So that would really be if progress is less than 100%. So the project isn't finished yet. It's still in progress and we are not past the due date. So if due date is after and we can just pick right here just to select today. So we'll always look at the current day to make that comparison. So it's very simple to build out these conditions. You can do them with custom JSON as well. Uh, sometimes it can simplify things. But um, why make things harder if you don't need to? In this case, we don't need to. We could use the easy stuff. So that's what we're going to do. So if the progress is under 100% and we are not past the due date, then we're just going to show this in uh, blue works for me. So we'll save this. This is our first rule. This will color the rows blue if they're still in progress and not overdue. Now you see over here, we've got three rows already in blue because they're not completed and we aren't past the due date. This top row is not completed, but we are past the due date. It is the 18th as I record this video. So this date's already passed. This is going to be overdue, but we haven't added that rule yet. Next, let's add the rule for the completed items. So for that, we'll add another rule. And if the progress is equal to 100% then it doesn't matter what the due date is it should always be green so we will hit save and there is our completed rule and you already see it's highlighted the one completed project we've got as green so what's left is this top row which is going to be overdue so we'll go back we'll add one more rule and this is going to be if progress is less than 100 and due date is before today so that would mean that it is past the due date the project is not completed yet it is now overdue so we could change this uh probably a red color would be better and then we'll click save and it looks like the colors are coming through nicely. Everything's being applied correctly to each of the conditions that I've got set up in this list. So that'll really do it for the colors on here. What we want now is some text to go inside these cells so that we could also have the words complete, in progress, overdue. And that's also going to be done by formatting. Now we could have used a calculated column for this. Uh, but I wanted to just show how everything could be done through formatting. So let's see how this is done. So there's a button down here that you'll usually see called advanced mode. And this is where we're going to be going now, because what we need to do is we need to look at the raw JSON because there's no real easy way through this system to change the value of this column or the cell depending on other factors it makes it very easy to apply custom styles and things like that but for changing the text we're going to be going into advanced mode and there's a lot of json in here because of all the rules that we put in Right here at the bottom is what we're really looking for though, the text content. So this is going to set the value of that field as far as the text that's going to be displayed. So right now it's set to the value of the status field. Well, we're not going to put any values in the status field. We want that to be automatic. So what we really need is we need a formula and these are about as easy as Excel formulas. They might be a little bit easier because you usually don't use that many different types of functions uh, to construct your formulas. 
So first we're going to start with something simple. We're going to end up with a more complex formula, but I never start just typing out the entire thing. I want to start small. I want to build out from there and I want to check my work as I go. We're going to get rid of everything inside this value and we're going to change it to if progress is equal to 100%, I want the value to say complete. Otherwise, incomplete. Oh, I forgot to put an equal sign here. There we go. So this is not taking overdue into account. This That's going to be a second step. Uh, but for right now, that looks like it's working fine. All the incomplete projects show incomplete. We got our one completed one showing correct. What we need to do now is modify this one more time to take into account the overdue status. So this is gonna use a function to get the current date. What we're gonna do with this is we're gonna add another if statement to go around this original one. Because if it's overdue, it doesn't matter what the status is, we don't have to look at anything else except for that. So I'll give myself some room here. We'll say, if due date, and by the way, these are the internal names of these columns. I made them without spaces, so I would have nice clean field names, and then later added back the space. If due date is less than now, what the, what the less than is really talking about is, is it an older date than, current, than right now? So yesterday will be a smaller date value than today. Tomorrow is going to be a greater date value than today. So if you haven't dealt with logical expressions greater than, less than, with dates, that's how SharePoint interprets all that. So if the due date is less than now, and we're gonna use two ampersand symbols to, to represent a Boolean and, and progress is not set to complete. So this will make sure we don't mark a completed project as overdue as soon as we pass the due date. So if the due date is less than now and the progress is not 100%, then we're going to mark this overdue. Otherwise, then we'll go into our other if statement. So if it's not overdue, then it's either complete or incomplete. And then we'll close the parentheses there. And let's try it out. Oh, I've got the wrong syntax here for this now what this should be is an at sign now let's try that okay there we go that looks much better so let me close this up and let's see what we've got now so the first project 75 percent done but it's overdue and the status shows that the second one is 100 percent done uh, the due date hasn't come and it's showing complete. Well, what if this is, let's move this due date back some and let's make sure that all the logic is working correctly. Uh, yep, it is. So the project is now overdue, but since it's complete, the status is complete. That logic is working good and the others are just simply not complete, but they're not overdue yet. So. All these statuses are showing correctly now, and I'm happy with how this has turned out. So now that all that work is done, some other things I wanted to point out are that a lot of things can be more dynamic in this JSON object, in this JSON formatting object. So you can do things like pretty much any of these values, you can change and convert to a formula. So if you wanted to change the padding, the same type of if statement that we used here at the bottom, can be used up here to change the padding to whatever you'd like. You can change the divs to spans. You can do all sorts of things in here to tweak how this looks. And here you see all of this complex 
Boolean logic to do all the comparisons. It's really just to apply classes to these HTML elements. Now, again, you do have to know a little bit of HTML, a little bit of CSS, at least to know what you're looking at here. But you can tweak things a lot once you get into this JSON side of the formatting. And as we saw in this formula, you can use other fields to make decisions on. So you could reference any number of different fields on the current list item that's being displayed. So for instance, this top one, you could reference any of these fields to make a decision on what to do with the styling, or in this case, the text content, what's displayed inside that cell. There's another type of formatting that you can do as well on lists and libraries, and that's list view formatting. For that, I'm going to make a separate video, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this.